In this video, we will talk about DeepWalk and NodeWeck, which are algorithms to generate node embeddings for graphs. So what are node embeddings? Uh, the general idea of node embeddings is to map nodes in a graph to some embedding space, ideally that is of less dimensions than the number of nodes in the graph itself. A function that does this, denoted here by ENC for encoder, is to be learned from the graph. The function takes as input a node and spits out a d-dimensional vector in the embedding space. A property we would like this encoder to have is that nodes that are similar in the graph are also similar in the embedding space according to some chosen similarity measures. The similarity of two nodes in the graph is denoted here by SG and the similarity in the embedding space is denoted by SE. There are several options available for computing similarity in a graph and similarity in the embedding space. The resulting embeddings can be used for downstream machine learning applications, such as node classification or link prediction. Let's look at an example of a node embedding. On the left is the social network of a university karate club. And on the right is one possible embedding of all nodes in this network in two-dimensional space. If similarity of nodes in the graph is taken to be adjacency and similarity of node embeddings is taken to be Euclidean distance, then this node embedding appears to be reasonable. We can see that nodes that are closer together in the network have their embeddings close together in the embedding space. For example, the red nodes in the network are close together in the embedding space, the green ones are close together in the embedding space, and so on. So how do we compute node embeddings? First, we have to define an encoder function which takes in as input a node and gives out a d-dimensional vector in the embedding space. Then we need to define or choose a similarity function which takes as input two nodes, vi and vj, and gives out a scalar. Similarly, we need to define a similarity in the embedding space which takes as input the node embeddings for nodes vi and vj, denoted here by zi and zj, and gives out another scalar. Then we need to optimize the parameters of the encoder function such that the similarity measure for a pair of nodes is approximately equal to the similarity measure of their embeddings. So let's take a look at one node embedding algorithm called DeepWalk. The input to the encoder is a graph with no node or edge features. The embedding function is a lookup table z shown here with the width of z equal to the number of nodes and the height equal to the number of dimensions we would like the embedding to be. How this table works is very simple. Each node in the graph will have a number associated to it from one to nv. Say we are asked for the embedding of node five. We just pick the fifth column here. This is one, two, three, four, five, yeah. And that is the embedding of node five. So what do we have to learn? Well, we have to learn all the entries of this lookup table Z. In order to do so, we still have to define the similarity in the graph and similarity in the embedding space. There are many options in which to define similarity in a graph. One simple definition is that if nodes are neighbors in a graph, they have a similarity of one and zero otherwise. In DeepWalk, the similarity is defined as the probability of two nodes co-occurring on a random walk. So more concretely, say we start the random walk at node vi. We then look at its neighbors and randomly pick one neighbor to visit on the next step of the random walk. So let's say we go here. Then we repeat this process, say we end up at this node here, and then this node here, and so on. We can repeat this procedure several times for example, 100 times for each node in the graph. Then we can estimate the probability of some node vj being visited during a random walk that started from a node vi. And this would be the similarity measure in the graph. Now that we have defined the encoder and the similarity of two nodes in a graph, we move on to similarity in the embedding space. In DeepWalk, the similarity of two embedding vectors, zi and zj, 
is given by the softmax function parameterized by the dot product between zi and zj. This gives out a probability, and our aim is to have this probability equal to the probability of two nodes co-occurring in a random walk. Now that we have defined the encoder, the similarity in the embedding space, and the similarity in the graph, we can now learn the node embeddings. In order to do so, we need a loss function, which we construct as follows. Given that we have the probability of any two nodes co-occurring on a random walk, we can sample many pairs according to this distribution of probabilities. For each of the sampled node pairs, we compute the similarity of their embeddings in the embedding space with the function SE, which gives out a probability. We then take the log of this probability and sum this quantity for all the node pairs that were sampled. To put this all together by minimizing the loss function, we are effectively tuning the embedding vectors for each node. And recall that our encoder function is basically a lookup table, where column i in the lookup table is the embedding vector for node i. Now we introduce node to vec, which is an improvement to deep walk. Instead of using an unbiased random walk, like in the deep walk algorithm, the node to vec algorithm instead uses a biased random walk. Let's note that there are two extreme ways of exploring a network, breadth-first search and depth-first search. Starting at the node V star here, a breadth-first search would first explore all of its neighboring nodes. Starting from V star, a depth-first search would tend to move far away from V star. A depth-first search can be used to explore the local neighborhood of a node, and a depth-first search could be used to explore the graph globally. So let's see how a biased random walk is implemented in Node2Vec with the help of this diagram. Let's assume that V star is the current node in the biased random walk. Let's also assume that Vs here is the previously visited node before V star. There are four possible nodes to visit in the next step. The unnormalized probability of visiting node Vs in the next step is proportional to 1 over p, where p is a parameter. The unnormalized probability of visiting a node Vi, which is the same distance to Vs as the current node V star, is 1. Finally, the unnormalized probability of the next step in this biased walk going to nodes that are farther away from Vs than V star is 1 over Q, where Q is a parameter. We have to note here that these are all unnormalized probabilities. In order to get probabilities, we just have to normalize them so that they sum to 1. By choosing the parameters P and Q, we can change the behavior of the biased random walk. So let's see the effect of setting these random walk parameters on the node embeddings of the graph. Here we see two graphs where the colors of the nodes visualize the clustering of the node embeddings in the embedding space. For parameters p equal to 1 and q equal to 0.5, the biased random walks tend to explore more of the network as it tends to move away from the previously visited nodes since the probability 1 over q is higher than probability of 1 over p. This results in an embedding which represents community structure. Community structure requires a global view of the network. For parameters p equal to 1 and q equal to 2, the biased random walk tends to explore local areas in the network. That is because it tends to stay close to the starting node of the random walk, as 1 over p is now greater than 1 over q. This results in an embedding that represents a node's role in a network. For example, blue nodes in this graph here tend to be connectors between two communities. Yellow nodes in this graph here tend to have low degrees, with most of them connected to other nodes by a single edge. The appropriate parameters to use for the biased random walk will depend on the downstream task. So let's review some properties of node to vec 
Uh, an advantage of Notovec is that it is highly scalable. Random walks are quick to generate and several random walks can be generated in parallel. The parameters of Notovec can be tuned to capture either local or global structures. However, there are several disadvantages of Notovec. First, it does not make use of node features if they are available. Secondly, nodes that are unseen during training cannot be assigned an embedding. 